You're right. Oh, so I just wanted to break down a trade, um, a CPR trade. And it's a new CPR trade where traders get captured on the wrong side of the market. And, um, you know, with CPRs, it's really, um, really identifying where the most supply and demand is, right? Imbalances, major imbalances of supply and demand are. And so when you're taking certain levels, it's important to understand technically the motivations for um, for orders, right? And why there's likely to be an imbalance, right? Something goes up when there's more demand than supply and something goes down when there's more supply than demand. <clears throat> now, um, this was actually, again, a quite an interesting one um, and a really uh, nice setup, especially when you have uh, the market that has been wrong for it. It's not just, you know, retail traders, but there are, there are actually institutions that um, were, you know, wrong footed here. So, you can definitely see and understand the motivations for them to want to exit this trade. And as I walk through the trade, um, you'll see why. So <clears throat> first things first, they actually, in fact, um, we have a stop punt, right? And so you've got, you know, a very accurate level, right, here and here. In fact, let me just get a pen. So you've got a very accurate level right there and right there. And then you get the stop hunt above that comes in. All right, stop hunt above the level. And that was just before the news came out, right? So the market consensus was actually for a rate hold. So the, uh, the, the, the general consensus for the market was, okay, well, they're going to hold rates. And I mean, I was saying this before <clears throat> the news. I said that there's if they do hold rates, there's a likelihood that the Swiss franc is likely to strengthen. So against the US dollar, I think that the market consensus was expecting more downside on a rate hold um, on the uh, Swiss. And so a lot of traders, A, would have been stopped out on the short, trying to get short here, placing their stop losses there. And then <clears throat> you get um, you know, the move to the downside where the institutions are pretty much in just before the news comes out. And then there's a shock, right? Surprise, uh, SMB surprise hike, which then causes the market to just blast straight through this area here as really fundamentals and value is, <clears throat> is really the order of the day, right? In terms of there's no technical level and no technical setup that's going to stand in the way of fundamental analysis. But there would have been traders in this area, going back to here and why are traders captured here. And it's really based off of uh, some technical analysis, right? You've got, and again, a nice accurate level of resistance, support. <clears throat> Not only do you have a stop hunt, but you have a level where traders would be, and breakout traders would be getting involved in this level of, you know, resistance support and as it breaks through that level there are strategies that are you know momentum strategies for example you've got this nice um you know sh uh, move to the short side very strong move and it would have drawn traders in FOMO etc and then again as we get the surprise um traders may have been stopped out here but there's a lot of traders who don't trade with stop losses and ultimately um, you know, they're 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 in under they're underwater at the moment, or they move and remove their stop losses, right? In terms of they might have intended to take the initial loss, but then due to again loss aversion bias where pain feels worse than uh than gains feel good, you know, the feel the feeling of pain is uh, I think like an average twice more intense than the, the feeling of um, you know, uh, joy, for example. Um, and what that does is that causes, um, you know, traders to remove their stop loss to try to avoid um, pain. Right. And so it's capture and then the pain um, of moving your removing your stop loss or not trading with a stop loss and also seeing your um, your unrealized loss. For example, your account go from, you know, risking potentially one or two percent. Now you're down five, six, 10, 15 percent, depending on where you got in. Right. So there's a lot of pain uh, going on here. And so you want some relief, some pain relief. Now, if traders have got went short here, yeah, in exit, in order to exit their trade, right? Because again, um, the next best trade in the book is a um, is a is a small loss after you know you've got an unrealized massive loss at the moment. But again, unrealized. Um, what you really want to do is you want to exit the trade if prices try, you know, 
do come down to this area here. So if you've gone short on this trade, then you have to buy to exit. So there's going to be a lot of demand, right? A lot of buy orders, a lot of demand orders in and around here. Just in general, traders will, whoever, whoever is, uh, you know, shorting up here, for example, if they're shorting here, then they are going to exit their trade at a logical level, which would be here. And if they're short, then to exit their trade, they have to buy. And also as well, when um, uh, you've got new traders getting into, you know, the, the market as well, who are trading support and resistance, and they're also buying. So around this relief area, not only do you have trapped traders, caught traders in their positions where it fails and then it comes back, right? If it does come back, because there's no guarantee that it will, but if it does come back here, you've got uh you know many reasons three reasons in order to look to buy from a technical analysis perspective and understanding the supply and demand equation then really the icing uh, actually it's not even the icing on the cake really it's the foundation right um is really the fundamental bias so um you know you really want to buy us dollars over swiss francs currently as the um the swiss franc have kicked off their uh, cutting cycle and the although the dollar is not too far behind them um, it does look like the uh, the Fed are on hold until June. So until it does start to really look like the Fed will start to um, cut rates, I think any pullbacks, if we get a pullback into this area, is really, really nice. And you understand as well that not only retail traders, there would have been a lot of institutional traders that would have been caught in and around this level because of the news event and how big it was, right? So a really, really, really nice uh, setup. And again, the context of knowing that they're there is also as well the fact that you've got a stop hunt just before the news. And when you get stop hunts just before any major news event, that's a nice indication um, that you've got institutional uh, buyers and sellers in that um, in that area because they like to take out everybody before and use the you know the news as catalyst um, in their direction. So a really, really nice uh, setup. If it does come down here, brilliant. If it doesn't, then um, and it keeps going higher, then unfortunately, uh, these traders who got caught are going to end up if they don't take the you know a larger loss, they're going to end up blowing their accounts, <clears throat> and we'll just miss out on the trade for now. But um, until it does finally come back, so yeah, really nice trade and um, uh, worth keeping an eye on. And uh, what you want to do also as well is just set an alert around here. You don't have to watch it every day. Just set an alert. You know. Uh, add alert to your, uh, you know, your, your charts. And then if your alert goes off, then you can start to get ready to look to, um, you know, trade the uh, trade this. If again, when prices come down, the US dollar still looks like the buy and the Swiss franc still looks like a sell. So really nice setup. And I uh, hope you, uh, hope it works out. And, um, and uh, yeah, I uh, hope you found this useful. Take care.